Did you hear me? You gotta stop. Are you all right? Are you hurt? You've been in a little trouble here. We don't have to fix that. Yeah, let's we'll see what we can do. Well, you definitely hurt yourself. I don't know how you did it. But it's got to be fixed. You know, I think this ribbon, yeah, I think this ribbon will do it. Yeah, we'll have you fixed up here in just a little bit. Show me on scene.
Would you like me to put that in the bag for you, sir? No. I'll keep it with me. I'm coming back on Saturday night. Late. Memo said next Tuesday. No one else knows. I have a feeling you'll have the pages by then. I'll make it worth your while. I'm not waiting another month. I'll have them. Hope you don't mind. It, uh, it seemed perfect for the job. I warned her about that road, but uh, she was just so headstrong. So I guess that was you yesterday. Yeah. You, you could have killed me. Yeah, I could have. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm glad to see that you are uh, developing a little concern for your own safety. My name's Benjamin. What's yours? I'm Ryan. Ryan. Hmm. No wonder, Ryan, when your parents brought you home from the hospital and, and named you Ryan, uh, they probably never dreamed they'd be planning your funeral just a few years later. Do you have my phone? Yeah. It's back at my place. Because I, like, really need that. Well... I don't normally have guests, but, uh, tell you what, uh, why don't you come by after school and I'll, I'll be happy to give it to you. But what about right now? <laughs> well, I'm not going there right now. Okay, well, I don't even know where you live. Well, it's just over that way a little way. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Okay, but how do I even know I can trust you? Well, I don't guess you do. near our Montgomery, Texas. He calls it Clarity Ranch. His fans from around the globe began moving here. All that new construction, building new homes but no new churches. We tried, but there's just no interest in the new neighborhoods. Yeah, I heard for these people. I don't know what they think they're gonna find. What's up, Joe? Good. How's it going? Yeah, good. Well, anyways, guys, I'm gonna cut out early. I'm going over to the high school. Grace, the uh, school counselor, she's sponsoring uh, a new club for students, and she asked me to stop by and invite them to come to the uh, Safe Talk course tomorrow afternoon. In fact, Justin, you should come by too. Um, I understand that you're doing a series with your youth ministry on suicide prevention. Safe Talk is a really good course. I've totally been meaning to check it out. I need to get permission from my boss. Boss? boss? Absolutely. I'll check with the rest of the staff and see if anyone else can come. Awesome. When does it start again? It's uh, 3 p.m. tomorrow. I'll send you more details. You know, eventually we want Safe Talk to be all over the community. That's our prayer. But uh, I got to run, guys. I'll see, see you later, later. okay? Take care. Take care. Joe. Montgomery is really changing. Population and income have skyrocketed. And Redmond Quinn, you are being attributed for all of that. Yes, I'm honored to be a part of the community. You have got to tell us why you chose Montgomery and in particular, Texas. Well, we looked at many options around the US and even abroad actually. And we decided this area checked all the important boxes. From the property to the people, we were completely charmed. Well, people are charmed by you because hey guys. your book is selling like hotcakes. Have you guys seen Ryan in here? Has Ryan been in here at all today? Uh, not no. Hey, uh, we'll let you know if we do. Thanks. Thanks. We're talking two million copies of Just to Clarify. So what is that message that you're trying to get out? Just to Clarify goes to the heart of humanity, and it's yearning to get beyond all the noise. Once we're able to do that, the resolution of life is dialed in more clearly. There's a sharper focus. Clarity is simply the discovery of our highest self. 
the recovery of our innate potential. What are you doing out here? You weren't expecting me? I'm the head of security, Carl. I'm everywhere. What's that for? I have my assignments, and you have yours. I thought you were out looking for some pages or whatever. Oh, very good, Carl. Excellent job of listening through the door last night. I have to take off points for actually admitting he did it, though. Do I need to remind you that I'm a level five, almost a six? I can't imagine why he keeps you around. My job is to find things of great importance. Have you ever wondered why we moved out here or why he needs those pages? I know everything I need to know. Blindly devoted, Carl. I get it. Someone with your dog-like loyalty can be very useful. My loyalty has served my path well. I don't think you get what's at the heart of the philosophy here. You're being used. That's the name of the game around here. But then you always were pathetic. Hi guys, because of the uh, recent increase, hi, welcome, in teen suicide in our area, the community is developing a network of safety for our students. Many times, students who are considering suicide will not talk to the adults in their lives, but they will talk to their friends and peers about it. Tomorrow afternoon, the Safe Talk course is being offered here. And Ms. Williams, your counselor, asked me to stop by and invite you to come. This course will teach you the signs to recognize in people that are having suicidal thinking. And it will show you how to ask questions in, in an unthreatening way. So you can establish a conversation and get them some help and keep them safe. I see some Concern looks in your faces. Uh, what are you thinking? What's, what's, what's on your mind? Yes? I don't know about everyone else, but I'm thinking that's a really big responsibility. What if I mess up? That's a good point. Very good question. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's say, what's your name? Peyton. Okay. Peyton, hey, thank you. Let's say Peyton has a friend, and she's concerned for this friend because that friend has suicidal thoughts. And she has decided to have a conversation with them and help them. She will have a network of people behind her to support her. The course will teach you two things, how to get the conversation going, who to call, and how to set that up. Most of the time, guys, students who are thinking about suicide, anyone really, they just need to see an option open up. And they will take that option because they need to desperately get out of their pit. So you see, Peyton, the conversation is not really about death. It becomes about life. Excuse me a second, guys. Hey, Ethan. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just give me... I'm here looking... Peyton, can you come here for a second? Hey, she's a friend of my kids. Give me one minute. I have a question for her. Of course, of course, sure. Have you seen Ryan? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I haven't. He wasn't at the house this morning? 
No. Thank you. What's up, Clarity Nation? All right, so I'm at this quaint little coffee shop here, and check this out. Look what they're watching in here. We got some local patrons right here, and they're watching Redmond's new interview. Guys, guys, what do you guys think of Mr. Quinn? I don't really know him. No. These guys can't wait to meet you, Redmond. Hey, everyone wave. Uh, can you do bulletproof here? Yeah. Uh, one bulletproof? I'm Isaac. You new around here? Yeah, Alex or Mr. Robinson. I'm a teacher at the high school. So. Cool. What do you teach? Uh, computer science. Uh, who are these guys? Oh, they get together here to catch up and pray. Pastor Chamberlain from Fellowship Church. And then Justin is a youth pastor there. And then Joe, he runs a great car care ministry called God's Garage. Cool, cool. Hey, I have this after school program that I run and it kind of helps kids navigate life and kind of chart their life's course and stuff. I have some flyers. I was wondering if I could leave them with you. Sure. Sweet. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. You too. But she couldn't go out there anymore. They, even to this day, a lot of people working in those uh, facilities in Missouri or her assistant generals. Yeah. Check this out. Progress is best directed when we all follow one simple rule. Determine what you want to do and do it. Redmond Quinn. I don't like it. Level up do better, be perfect. That's the problem. The deception. Being your own savior. This guy, Redmond Quinn, is leading a lot of people away from the church. Shelly! Oh no, Shelly, Shelly, wake up. Wake up, baby. Wake up, come back to me, baby. Baby. You can't just take off like that. You gotta let us know where you're going. I need to know. Hey, it's Ryan, right? What can I get you? Later. You're Ryan, yeah? Hey, hey. Um, Justin, I work over at the community church. I'm the student pastor there. Um, you uh, got late arrival today or no school? Yeah. Okay. Is that for uh, sports or a job? No, I, I, I quit track and I don't I don't really have a job. Okay. Um, Ryan, you any good at fixing stuff? Yeah, I, I guess. Okay. Do you like cars? Awesome. Uh, Joe, the God's Garage guy that just left, he's looking for somebody part time. I could pass your name along. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, if they hire you, I get 10% of your check. I'm just kidding. Why don't you give me your number? Hey, Pastor. Oh, hi, Tina. How are you today? Good. Hey, I was glad to hear you're a Redmond Quinn fan, because there's so much truth, you know, in what he teaches. But I wasn't, I wasn't sure how you felt about him. Uh, what do you mean? Well, you know, I thought the church was all about just read the Bible and Christian books. <laughs> you know, that kind of attitude. 
I'm so glad you're more open-minded than that. Why do you think I'm a Redman Quinn fan? Oh, well, uh, local clergy are big Redman Quinn fans. Let's all level up. That's a great picture, you guys. Hey, um, I, I thought you should know, during the meeting, Detective James showed up at the door. Did they find out anything else about Lindsay? Is is he still here? No, he's he's gone already. Uh, he was really looking for his son, Ryan. I hope everything's okay there. His track coach stopped by earlier and told me that he dropped out. Mm. And that is really not a good sign. Yeah, I know that's that's not a good sign at all. I need to make some time and talk to Ethan, and I need to do it soon. He just seemed very anxious. I'm worried about both him and Ryan. The lies are coming like arrows from the enemy. So, the first piece of armor as you suit up to deal with Satan is the belt of truth. He's really good. He's getting a lot of heat. Do you know people are actually leaving? They're going to all these new Sunday morning inspirational events at these new meditation centers all around town. They say he's too negative. Well, truth is truth, and you can't hide from that. I agree. You better get ready. For what? You'll be asking you out soon. What are you talking about? You're trying to get rid of me. You asked me to come live with you. You said it'd be like old times. You said it'd be like when we were children. Now you're trying to marry me off. He's a good man, Hazel. I know that. And I've been thinking about it. A lot. More than I care to admit. Ugh. I'm too old for all of this. You just better get ready. That's all I'm saying. Well, I don't want to get ready because I'm scared, okay? There's your truth. Hey, did you talk to your dad? He was looking for you this morning. My dad? Hey, Ryan. Hey. Yeah, he was like really worried. So what, he called you? No, he was here this morning. We were in a class for our meeting and he came to the meeting to ask me if I knew where you were. My dad was at the school. You must have had your phone off. I lost my phone. Oh, that's the worst. Well, I mean, I know where it is, it's just I have to go get it. I've just never seen your dad like that, so upset. You can use my phone if you want to check in with him. I did that once. Lost my phone, I mean. Actually, I think someone stole it, but Anyways, my mom couldn't get in touch with me, so she was I wonder, freaking. Ryan, when your parents brought you home from the hospital and, and named you Ryan, uh, they probably never dreamed they'd be planning your funeral just a few years later. Ryan? Ryan? Mm-hmm. You okay? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Sure. The wobble is going. <laughs> Good with the brakes. Oh, yeah. So how are those repairs coming? They're, they're coming. Going yeah, along yeah. fun. How about the brakes? Oh, yeah. yeah. What did you get this time? The usual. Sardines. Vienna sausage. Microwave mac and cheese. I didn't know they still made these. Oh. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I thought these... Uh, the food is for everyone. Look, we can trust him. He's a preacher. Okay, I'll tell him. We have a friend, let's say, and we like to keep him supplied. A friend? Look, anytime we get a car donated, it sits out front, parked for a few days until we can get to it. A while back, we noticed a pattern was happening. This is cool. You tell him. <laughs> well, a couple of days go by and somebody diagnoses the problem, goes out to the junkyard, gets the exact parts that we need, and leaves them sitting by the car. He does it at night while nobody's here, and we find him in the morning. Who is he? 
We couldn't tell. That guy's really camera shy. So we start putting these snacks out there, thinking maybe he's homeless or something and needs food. Um, but sometimes he takes it, sometimes not. Uh, I don't really don't think he's homeless. More of a, you know, your quiet, friendly neighborhood mystery mechanic. <laughs> but he loves these. He never passes these up. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about this either, buddy. It looks like you brought a friend with you. So, my phone? I find these all the time. In the woods? No, at your school. My school? Yeah. I've never seen you there before. Well, I'm the, the night custodian. How do you get there? The same way you got here. It's only about two miles. That ribbon that you use to prepare the turtle shell, it's kind of important to me, just in case you see it again. I see her about every day. She's a tortoise, and I can get your ribbon back for you. I'll, uh, I'll use something else till she heals up. Thanks. It's just kind of important. Uh, did you uh, miss class this morning? Uh, it was after 8 o'clock when I saw you. No, I quit track, so they gave me late arrival. I'm pretty sure I'll uh, see that tortoise for school's out tomorrow. I'll get your ribbon, and uh, so why don't you come back after school? About the same time tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking about what you said. What did I say? About my parents. My dad. I guess I never really thought about how he would feel if I had gone through with it. So, uh, tell me about your dad. He's a detective. Hmm. Part of that thin blue line between order and chaos. You know, that's a, that's a real calling. Yeah, he's actually on a missing persons case right now. She was one of my teachers. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? No, uh, which teacher? Miss Jordan, kind of young, blonde hair. You know her? Well, not personally, I clean her room. She teaches health, third room on the left, West Hall. Are there any leads? No, I mean, they found her car last night. That's all I know. Hmm. So, uh, your dad's a police detective. Uh, what's your mom think about being married to a law enforcement officer? She died five years ago. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Uh, could, could I ask how she died? Car wreck? Drunk driver? No, she just... Took a curve too fast on a rainy night. Oh, my. It's got to be so hard on you. Yeah. So, uh, what was your favorite thing about her? She was an artist. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of art? Painting, mostly. Oil paint? Yeah. Watercolors, too. Yeah? Did she do any drawing? She did some sketches in an old book.
Hey. What happened? Is this about a boy again? Does this a mom a better person for these things? Maybe a friend? Well, mom's not here, and after four months, I'm still working on the friend thing. So, okay, I like this guy, and I'm thinking I'm gonna text him and just see if he found his phone, because he lost it earlier. Is that weird? Not if you needed to know if he found his phone. Well, I don't need to know that. You just want a reason to talk to him? Yes. So is that weird? Okay, here it is. Hey Ryan, just checking to see if you found your phone. Should I send it? Yeah, I better not because I've only talked to him like two or three times, but he's really cute and he's really sweet. And his sister is Riley James, who's like perfect and confident, but he's really sweet. But I think he might like Peyton. They grew up together, so I guess I better not. But I'm pretty sure Peyton doesn't like him like that. So maybe he'd be open to just talk, you know? And then who knows? Okay, I'm gonna send it. Do it. Yeah? Okay. There. I sent it. Is it him? Yes, thank you. Who is this? is beautiful. Is this where you do most of your writing? Yes. I'm starting a new project, just in the research phase. I hope to start writing again soon. You haven't read all of these, have you? Some of the titles sound really bizarre. Nazis and the occult? I've read most of them, yes. The workings of the human mind are always interesting to me. You surprised by them? No. I mean, I have books I don't necessarily believe in, so I assume you do too. So you're the curious sort. You keep an open mind and choose for yourself. Yes. Ancient wisdom would say you have a strong black flame then. Black flame? You're questioning intellect. That makes it sound pretty creepy. <laughs> creepy? No. Powerful. Yes. I have a strong black flame as well. You know, like I was saying before, you could actually help me with my next book. I'd like to pull together a small group of local people here and do some mind exploration. I'd like to hone my ability to articulate ideas in these small group settings. Do you have any friends that you could invite to a small discussion group? I do know a guy. He's a teacher. He moved here last year. We dated for a while. He's a huge fan of yours. Ah, a fan. Yeah, honestly, I'd prefer people who are more skeptical so that I can sharpen my points. They can't be your only friend. No, not at all. I have a lot of friends. I have one very good friend, but she would be no help. She goes way beyond skeptical to just rude about your teachings. I don't know why. They're so helpful and positive. The reason you like what I have to say is because you already believe it before you hear me say it. What about my open mind? What happened to my black flame? Open minds have their place, but once you choose your path, you must focus. 
An inability to stay focused on one's chosen path is a sign of a weak will. And adherence to your will is your first purpose in life. I like that. It's one of the quotes I put on the board for my students. What's your chosen path, Lindsay? Wow, the exact question I hoped you would never ask. You need clarity. Yes, right. It's no surprise your paths brought you here. This is what I've observed. You want to be challenged. You want to grow. You want to make your mark. You want to take your path in expanding consciousness by creating your best life. Well, yeah, but I guess that's what everyone wants. Not badly enough to get it. I could teach you more. And if you could convince your friend to come along, I'd consider it a healthy challenge for my teaching. She could play my devil's advocate. you enjoyed breaking strongholds. Our prayer and our mission is to reach the brokenhearted with the hope and healing Christ provides. Breaking Strongholds is a unique show in that it's been completely funded through donations from people just like you and just like us. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we're asking you to join our giving team. You can make a contribution of $5. We also have people that support us through donations of $25,000. Every sized contribution matters. We especially need monthly supporters. You can find out more about supporting this ministry by visiting reflectivemedia.org and clicking on the donate tab. And, and you know, this show is not just a show. I mean, we have we've created a study guide with discussion questions that you can easily access on breakingstrongholds.com. We appreciate you and we're asking you to support us through prayer, through contributions, and through sharing this message of hope with somebody else.